we have another case of fibrosing lung disease. We have ground glass confined to the periphery with areas of fibrosis, like traction bronchiectasis and irregular reticulation and traction bronchiectasis. It appears that they are confined to the periphery. So, as always, the approach we see it will be placed in UIP category or it is non UIP. Let's proceed from upward downward. We see here that the reticulation traction bronchiolexis confined to the periphery, no bronchocentricity. Ground glass confined to the fibrosis, always at the periphery, no bronchocentricity, but no honeycombing. So absence of honeycombing means it is non typical UIP. So check now for the bronchocentricity again. If no bronchocentricity, so it will be a case of probable UIP, which is the case here. See the bronchi, they are tapering. They are not, as you see here, here, no fibrosis around, no irregular articulation, no ground glass opacity around the bronchus, around the bronchi, they are tapering. So the abnormality and fibrosis is confined to the periphery of the lung. Again, no, the triad of bronchocentric fibrosis are traction bronchiectasis, irregular reticulation, and ground glass opacity which is absent here. Bronchi are, has continuity to the periphery without fibrosis here. It arrives to the peripheral location near the diaphragm and the lung base. So this has started to be peripheral. Traction bronchiectasis, ground glass opacity and irregular reticulation. But when it is proximal to the central of the lung, parahyler, it is normal, almost normal, and this is in the majority, nothing 100%, but this is all in all. Collectively, you judge it collectively. Collectively, the abnormality of fibrosis are confined to the periphery. No bronchocentricity. The, there is epicobasal gradient as well, increasing from upward to downward in the lung. So this is UIP pattern, lacking honeycombing, so we have probable UIP. Presence of bronchocentricity will deny also probable, which is not the case here. So we have probable UIP pattern, and we can expect that this patient has systemic sclerosis due to the dilated esophagus, which is obviously noted here. I intended not to include the age or history because I want to fix the patterns in the mind of the radiologists listening to me because interstitial lung disease and UIP and other entities are not so hard to diagnose. And at the same time, I ask you to always ask for the details of clinical information. But here we have like an education or teaching session. We wanna fix the uh, patterns. Here without history, without knowing the age of the patient, we have probably IP. Again, probably IP will be the same as the typical IP. No differential diagnosis. If you are confident to the diagnosis of probable UIP, otherwise the value of the diagnosis will be lost if you put any differential diagnosis like NSIP, for example. 
why it's not in SIP here? Because of lack of two things. Lack of the bronchocentric distribution of ground glass in non-fibrotic areas and no subpleural sparing. And thanks for your attention.